Hi you guys, welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker and today is show and tell number 212. Pippin, really? He came up here for no, he was asleep when I came up here and now he's clawing stuff on the shelf. Anyway, I am very, very sorry. I was not able to come and talk with you guys last week. It was bedlam over here. So Saturday, two weeks ago, so nine days ago, I don't know, you know, Troy got back from Germany on Friday night, felt fine. Saturday, we went out and ran errands. He felt great. After lunch, he started feeling a little queasy and was like, oh, maybe I just ate something a little weird. And then Saturday night, it was pyrotechnics everywhere. Um... So yeah, that was a little dramatic and a little startling. So like I'm running out at eight o'clock at night to get bananas, Gatorade, um, Lipton's noodle soup, and there was a uh, regular bread because he's been eating rye bread recently. So I need to get some regular bread for toast. Anyway, uh, apples were sad. So bananas and toast it was. And I get home and it's getting worse. It's it's getting worse. It's getting worse. And for about eight hours, nonstop. And, but the whole time, he wasn't running a fever. If anything, he had a negative temperature. He, uh, it was like 97.4 at the lowest. So I, we're assuming kind of, you know, food poisoning or something like that. Um, he had had some like veal on the plane. Maybe that was it. And... Monday, I got all the housework done, was just, I, I went to go work out and I'm like, I just don't have the energy for this right now. I'm going to go eat and take a nap and I'll just work out when I get up. I woke up from my nap and came out of the bedroom and looked at Troy and was like, it wasn't food poisoning. <laughs> so Monday, I got to experience the pyrotechnics for eight hours straight and it was literally every half hour for eight hours straight. Um, so I'll be honest, I, I would not wish this flu bug or 24 hour bug on my worst enemy. This was the most violent bug I've ever had. Um, we've been very lucky to not get these 24 hour cooties in a long time. It's been 19 years since either one of us had gotten one of these. But uh, Troy basically ended up with whiplash and uh, his entire abdominal wall from the compression has been very sore. So like trying to cough, trying to breathe, things like that has been very difficult. I lost my voice from it, from the violence of it, not from the act. The act. Um, I also had uh, the the inside muscle band around the rib cage on the inside, not the outside, is also still doing weird things. Like sometimes it will, like if I have like a shoulder cramp, it will trigger a spasm in that inner wall area which is totally separate from my external muscles and it'll trigger a panic attack out of nowhere or panic attack like symptoms because it feels like I can't breathe and it feels like I'm suffocating, but like this still hasn't fully healed yet. And my voice still is very crackly and going in and out and stuff. So anyway, last week was a little bit of an adventure. Um, we still haven't mingled with other people until today. Troy went into the office, so it's actually really late for me to be filming in a day. Uh, it's three o'clock in the afternoon on Monday, so it's actually like really late for me to be filming, but uh, I hope you guys saw my short letting you guys know that I was going to be uploading a show until on Tuesday, not on Thursday this week, and that we're going to be doing an ALC and Yarnable unboxing, and then a special unboxing for Saturday, but it's just been interesting. 
we'll just we'll just leave it at that. It's been violent and interesting. Uh, neither one of us still have our energy completely back. Neither one of us still feels 100%. I think I'm feeling about that 75% range. I'm fully functional, but I have to take breaks. Um, like I was in the middle, uh, of course, Friday, I finally got the uh, sideboard unit that I wanted for the Brother Scan and Cut and Cricket in the other room, and I couldn't put it together till last night, and I got about halfway through, and just like this hot flush came over me, and it's not that you feel like vertigo-y or nauseous, but it's like everything kind of feels like it's going wobbly for a minute. Really weird. But, uh, yeah, so we're still not fully recovered. We're still, you know, I think Troy's probably closer to like 85, 90%. I'm a little bit closer to 75%, but I did want to film today because I have time right now and I feel okay right now. Uh, we're both doing the, while I feel okay, let me go do. So we're getting things done in really weird orders around the house. Things aren't getting done until like sometimes nine o'clock at night. And it's like, oh, I feel fine now. So let me go do that. You start a load of laundry at nine o'clock at night. Here's for the record. Normally I'm heading to bed starting at around eight. I'm doing the like feeding the cats and washing face and things like that. Like normally I'm heading to bed by nine, but if I feel okay at nine, I'm going to go ahead and get that thing done. So <laughs> everything's just, but I felt good and I felt good enough to put on makeup and I have taken a shower and everything today. And I was like, okay, look, I'm going to film. I'm going to try to get all three videos done now. That way I can continue to heal and relax for the rest of the week. And hopefully my voice will continue to get better. Uh, singing is not an option right now, but I can at least vocally communicate. So bear with the, the crackles, um, things like that. But anyway, yeah, seven minutes for life. I guess y'all haven't had life updates. Anyway, I mean, it's been two weeks. <laughs> So I have a lot of stuff in my basket and I have one particular project that I'm mega excited about. So we're going to start with, I finished the next three sets for the Addy stuff that I had. So we have a cowl and a matching hat, a double-sided hat. Shove that back in there because I'm since these are going to the homeless organization, I like to pair them like this. That way the sets are already together when they're being distributed. <clears throat> Makes it easier for my friend who handles the distribution. We also have, I think of these as like the NC State sets. But that's just because my dad's an NC State graduate. Um, but we have a six foot scarf. And right now it's hanging a little short. It feels like it feels like it's only at five five. But I measured it. I think just being folded up makes it shrink in a little bit. But it is six foot. And we've got the I did the collegiate stripe detail there. I've got to find I wrote down the cowls that I was doing that had the striping pattern on the side. I need to go find my formula for that again. See, see if I can find where I wrote that down because I really like how those were looking and those were great for some of the, uh, I only have a little bit left skeins. But my tension was a little tighter on this hat. So the scarf doesn't want to go all the way in. But there was that set. <clears throat> and then finally, this one is using sweet rolls. The, the worsted weight Hobby Lobby sweet rolls. And I really love how this set turned out. So the stripes don't match, but we did end with the citron peridot green color. Oh, 
on the scarf. And then the hat is actually reversible and it does actually look different on each side. Depending on how you wear it. So I like how this turned out. I would definitely use this through the Addy again because it went through like a dream. Uh, when I got that set, this was the first thing I actually fully made since we moved here. So I was in the process of setting up the machine and making sure that the machine, nothing got like jammed or broken in the move. <clears throat> I still need to go through with my sewing machine surgery and do the same thing. Although both of those probably need to be serviced before I start tinkering with them anyway. But we have three hat and scarf sets. I have been working on my No Shades of Grey projects. I just didn't bring them up here. I also have been working on the Pink Lemon Peel Baby Blanket that I shared with you guys and the whips that I'm kind of setting myself up to really like focus on these UFOs. So I did also make two corner to corner squares. These are the ones for the bedspread blanket. So these are 14 rows. And these are holding two DK or sport weight yarns together using a size I crochet hook, right? No, J crochet hook. So we got two of these. And I have enough, I think, in my basket right now to make like half of the next square. But I'm not really sure how many squares I need because I'm not sure how many I have in my basket or where I am on that blanket anymore. It's been like two months since I worked on that and I have like two squares on the row I was finishing and now I don't know where. Something I really need to work on, especially since it's on the love seat in the living room, like I should be working on that, especially on the days where my brain's going, which is a lot, a lot of week. So I did make a purchase. I shared with you guys two weeks ago that I ordered from Hearts on Fiber and that went to my like rewards for this year. So these may also go to my rewards, but I did, before they put their, their Queen City Yarn on sale, I did actually purchase from Queen City Yarn themselves directly because they had a 40% sale going on or 60% sale going on. Let's see what my invoice says. Oh, it doesn't. Um, and one of the things that they had, so I shared with you guys, Tana Scray had released the new, um, books and her like movies inspiration series of patterns books. And one of them was Nightmare Before Christmas and Queen City Yarn actually provided the yarn for the Sally Socks and they had the Sally Socks set originally listed. Unfortunately, by the time they were fulfilling my order, it was sold out. But that's actually what made me place the order. And I was thinking instead of doing Sally Socks, I was going to do a Sally Shawl. But, oh well, that, that didn't pan out for me. But that's okay because I got other stuff as well that is also very, very cute. And on a really good deal. As I always say, if you want to find good deals from dyers and stuff, follow your dyers, follow their Instagram, um, get their newsletters, things like that. Um, first thing I got was this. I mean, how could I not? It's adorable. And it has the full metal thermos cup versus a lot of them recently there's like a coating or a plastic on the inside and I'm not shelling out for things like Stanley I'm sorry um, I'd rather have something like this that's a little bit more me so anyway coffee first mug which is the, uh, that's the secondary reason why I placed the order. Those were the Sally Sock set, and this was really what I wanted. Uh, however, I did get this, which is Sparkle Fairy. This is on the worsted weight base. So I'm trying to buy hand dyed yarns that are not sock weight. Everything I buy seems to be sock weight, and now I've got this beautiful collection of sock weight yarn. 
but not enough projects to put it into. So I'm really trying to bulk up my not sock weight hand dye jar. And that's one of the things as I'm buying this year, I really want to be primarily focused on. I also got this one, which is on their DK base. This is by Felicia, which I thought that was like just kind of too good to pass up. I love how it looks like a summer day with a summer sunset at the bottom, or it looks like summer and fall. I don't know. I just love it. And the other thing I got, so this is a weird thing to purchase, especially having just said what I said about sock weight yarn, but I have a project I've really been wanting to make, but I've been looking for a tonal gray, charcoal to mid-tone gray that I can make this project with. It is a uh, cowl, but it's, it's fair owl color work. And I have a couple of skeins that would be awesome for the color part, but I really want a strong, subtle contrast, if that makes any sense. Um, so one color that's not in any of the yarns that I've been looking for is gray. So even if there's like flecks of black, it would still stand out against the gray, but I didn't want to use white because a lot of them have white base. The yarns have white base that I like. So anyway, I am, I have been two years trying to find something I think will work as the background for this. That's not too light and will read white. And I purchased this on the sale. So it is a cool, cool tone gray which I, you know, if this, this is a project for myself, like this is kind of my palette, but this isn't a really good example, but this end is like, if I want to do the color work in this, that will still pop out. And of course, I've covered up my ALCs and urinals, so I can't even just grab from there. Anyway, I'm not going to wear myself out finding options or make y'all wait or try to remember to pause and smush and... Um, but yeah, so like I've been looking for this yarn for that project. And I think this will work. It's just dark enough. And this is the problem. When, you, when you're looking for something particular... <laughs> You have to learn how to be patient to find it because it is very frustrating to try to find like that perfect thing sometimes. And I really wanted a tonal. I didn't want it to be a flat background. So I made this hard on myself. I really didn't have to. I could have picked a colorful skein that wouldn't uh, create visual anyway. So anyway, I think this may work with most of the yarns I was thinking about. Because the white is uh, definitely contrasting to the gray, but this isn't so dark, it's reading black. So when we get up into the more saturated color bits, this isn't muddying into this. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but when I saw that they had a mid-tone tonal gray on the sale, I went ahead and grabbed it. So that's what I got from Queen City. I'm going to go ahead and set my basket on the floor because the next thing I have to share with you guys, I am so mega excited about this project. I shared the work in progress short on here uh, last week because I was just, or two weeks ago, because it was, it was the Thursday before tour came home from Germany. Um, I just was so excited and I still am. I cannot believe how good this turned out. So this is from a tutorial from May May Made It again. This is like one of the folios that started the whole like legal pad folio thing. So she was making these folio albums and then there was a second folio album and then she just started playing with like the sizes of the folio album. Like she, last year she was on this whole folio album folio building kick. And she did use some that were like store-bought bases that she just covered. And then she did things like this where she actually made the album itself and then decorated the album. So I literally made a book. I made a book. 
physically made an album. The whole thing I made. And there's even mini books on the inside of it. They're not really, but they're kind of like little mini books. So I used... I've had two of these in my stash for a while now because I knew I wanted to do something fun with this. But this is Paprika from Photoplay. I think I got mine in 2018. So this is probably like not available anywhere anymore. But you can kind of see like what the theme is. Kind of like a little bo boho-y, deserty kind of cute thing. I love the papers in this collection. Many moons ago... Mamie actually used this to make an, a junk journal album thing where she literally took like recycled cardboard and made a, she took rings and made a book. I did do that one. Like I've done that before, but that's not really like making a book. That's just kind of like stapling some papers together and making them pretty. <laughs> this was different. This was very different. And I am, as somebody who wants to scrapbook, but doesn't like, I am so excited so anyway, that's the paper pack that I used. All of my edges are covered in paper. I did decide to be a little matchy-matchy with how I did mine. I've got a little embellishment. I think I need to put some glue on that just to make sure it stays really, really down. I embellished the front. This is a sticker from the sticker sheet. This was one of the cut-aparts in there. We have a very nice magnetic closure on this. This probably would have been easier for me to set up my desk and film instead of trying to do this standing up, but. So it opens up, drops down like that. These pieces fold out. And then this side folds out. And everything's covered. So in the top section, I have some little spots that you can put photos or like you can put like a sheet of paper that you've journaled like what you're sharing about in the album. But the first thing in there is this that's using one of the cut aparts. I had some cardstock that even kind of matched this. And it opens up. It's a little mini book. Just a little fold over mini book, but still it's a book inside of a book that I made. <laughs> And so we've also got these, oops, and then on the back, you can put a picture or a little journaling spot. So in the bottom section, once again, we have another collection of little extra photo spots. So I've got three of these. And then we have another little mini book. I am just pleased as punch at how well this turned out. This is the kind of thing where for me, it could have gone so wrong. I never do stuff like this. And this was not hard, just involved. I mean, it was, it was an involved project. My knitting project right now is hard. It's a lot of cables and I have to think a lot. This I had to think, but it wasn't hard. So anyway, I am so excited. I literally made a book. How cool is that? I love this. And the measurements really weren't that hard. I just used the 110 pound cardstock that I have in my stash. So like I, and it's not like once you start decorating it, she's not joking in the tutorial. It will be linked in the description box down below. But like once you start covering this, like it really thickens everything up because you've got heavier or you've got your 110 pound cardstock and then you have like the, the photo cards, the decorator series paper type stuff that's also a little bit on the heavier side. I mean, it's between 65 and 80 pounds. So it's like good cardstock. I 
I'm just so excited. Like I said in the short that I shared, like I just had to share with people who might also be excited because I was sitting here alone while Troy was in Germany doing this. And so I did last week while we were sick, like have like 10 minutes here and there where I was able to come up and finish decorating and embellishing this, but I had it fully covered by the time Troy got home on Friday. So I did finally finish this last week and I'm just like, oh my God. I'm so excited. So I think I'm just going to pick pictures of us in here, just the two of us. Um, none of the family pictures or anything like that, just because it's my first one. Like, why not share it? Like, have it be pictures of the person I love the most. Pippin seems to be offended by that statement. But anyway, that is everything that I have to share with you guys in my bucket of goodies. So I hope y'all had a wonderful, fantastic day. Or I hope you're having a wonderful, fantastic day. <laughs> I can already see how the, the other two videos I'm, I'm hoping to film today are going to go at this rate. But um, yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful, fantastic day. As always, I love you guys. I cannot wait to see you again. I have so many fun things I want to share with you guys. And I'm going to run out of time to like share everything over the next couple weeks because... I'm so excited. Anyway, I love you. I will see y'all on Thursday. Please take care of yourselves. Bye guys.